something to say on that, Mr. Diana Jones. looks majorly different on them. He has no her? Comments. No, Diana. Grayson. You know her? How do you yeah. know her? I got a church with her. For real? Yeah. She's, no, she's, she's, she's really nice. Oh, oh my god! Ah! Forever! That's what I'm gonna do! I'm gonna you what your favorite movie was! I love it! It's been a flick! Kristen! Ah! Oh my god! And Josh Hartnett. Sorry. I like him. What are you doing? Josh Hartnett. Josh Hartnett. No, it's different. Josh Hartnett. You people like Josh Hartnett. He is so ugly. I know it. Thank you. Right here. Josh Hartnett is ugly. Oh my god. I can put him on yours. Cool, man. I like the cherries the best. Those are so cool. Thank you. Are those lights? They're lights. Yeah, you can put them around your thing. Hey, I have tropical lights. Oh, okay, you have to look through this. Oh this god. is fine. Oh my <laughs> god, I'm not just put that picture in there. What <laughs> picture? Ah. I'm sorry, whoever I'm holding. Oh, there's your ex. You had no yet. Tess, there's your ex. What oh, the sure. heck? Oh my There's Heather. God. This is my party. Oh, it's nobody's party. This is my party. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. My butt's all wet. My butt's all wet. Yeah, my butt's sticking out. Yeah, someone said that it looks like you didn't We're have being anything on in that picture. Yeah, I was I in the way. Oh my gosh. Look. Yeah, I tried to find the worst pictures of you, Callie. Oh, yeah. Oh, you, you did a great job. No, oh, no, there I am. No. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Where are you? That was hilarious. Who is that? That's Callan. Oh I hate that picture. I hate That's that picture, cute. but I had to give That's it back Jillian? to you. That's Julian? Yes. Oh you should see the one I have that you that in school. That was a bad. <laughs> Shut up. No, do you, remember, do you remember the one that I have of us Heather. in the gym? Okay, somebody so is about crazy. to break my leg. That's me. What was that at? <laughs> That's fifth grade graduation. That's fifth grade graduation. Yeah. yeah. That's Terry. Oh my god. That's me with my blue fingernails. Oh gosh, you did not put the other picture in here, did you? What other picture? The one with the visor, me. No. Oh good. It looks cute. Where did I put that? Callie, you look so little. Oh, thanks. Yeah. We should see like look pictures from like Natalie in fifth grade. She looks so different. I know it. She had long so hair. So she looks so all nerdy. like sweet and innocent. <laughs> oh. That's it. That's, That's it. That's it, Julie. Okay, okay, okay. Keep looking. There's more. Okay. She's okay. Louise, Jillian. Okay, get good. back in your little spot. So I gotta sit down because I don't want to break the back. Okay, of the you can I'm look at this, break. but you might not want to show other people. Okay. <laughs> His daughter's name. Of course, he was what, really. He was really testy and really snotty. What are you doing? You have oh, my her name, and he said, "Yeah, right on the sheet it said Cammy, so it was the chick's fault." Yeah. Chick Hello. Yeah. And it was very noisy.
From his eloquent and scholarly view of life in the song, Time Marches On. The song begins with the first verse, Sister cries out from her baby bed, Brother runs in, feathers on his head, Mama's in a room learning how to sew, Daddy's drinking beer, listening to the radio, Hank Williams sings Elijah and Dear John, Time Marches On, Time Marches On. Now that's, that's pretty calm, that's, that's, uh, that's pretty neutral. We, you ever heard the song, you hear this rouge, clear complexion, so brother wearing beads smokes a lot of dope. Mama is depressed, barely makes a sound. Daddy's got a girlfriend in another town. Bob Dylan sings like a rolling stone, time marches on, time marches on. We get some more of this time marching on music. In the final verse, sister calls herself sexy grandma. Brother's on a diet, high cholesterol. Mama's out of touch with reality. Daddy's in the ground beneath the maple tree. As the angels sing an old Hank Williams song, time marches on, time marches on. Now, if you leave here with nothing else tonight, I hope you leave with the understanding that this is no way to live. This. This is not what we anticipate for your future. This is not a good attitude to have about the future. If you live like this and die, people who know you and, 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 and know how you live and read your obituary and see where you graduated from the University of Missouri, uh, that won't look good on the rest of us. New relationships and new experiences. Your education gives you the foundation for even greater experiences and rewards as you leave MU. It also gives you the foundation for your life to get progressively better. I do not want to mislead you into thinking that there will be, not be tough times. There will be. But always be optimistic through disappointments and failures. Failure almost always provides opportunities. And life will offer opportunities and enjoyment when least expected. Service to your community and others is the explicit mission of your school. It, it is the explicit mission of human environmental sciences. And that's the second point of being others. We improve the quality of life for individuals and families in the communities where they live and work. Jeanette Louise Beeman. Sean Gregory Brokaw. Scott Allen Clark. Zachary Jane. Jay Gunther III. Yes. 
Cum Laude. Kate Sandra Patterson.
front door. It's 1305 Hickam, occupied by the Oryx. Um, hope this shows up. This is after we've had three people working three hours, so six man hours of work have already been done on this unit. Um, the carpets are all destroyed. There is a smell of urine in every room, especially the upstairs back bedroom. All carpets and pads are going to have to be torn. The floors have to be sealed with sealant to keep the odors back out. And it's going to take a full repaint. Every, everything in here has to be repainted. All the blinds are going to have to be replaced. There's not a one that is still in good shape. And I haven't checked, but I think virtually every screen at $20 a screen is going to have to be replaced from the kids sticking their hands through them. Uh, the light is poor. They've basically taken every light bulb or never replaced any light bulbs. There's damage to the wall from the doorknob. There's an idea what the carpets look like. Uh, hope this shows up. I'm sure this camera won't do it justice, but they're all basically shot. There's no light bulbs in the closet, so I can't show you that. You can see the grunge all over the walls. Damaged door frame. Toilet lid's cracked. There's absolutely no cleaning at all. You can see the Cover grunge in the wall. This is by the light switch. You can see the dirt. Back door is ruined. There's a couple hundred bucks right there. Left mattresses, left all sorts of trash and stuff. This is back in the living room again. I wanted to get a run down on the carpet. Too bad this camera can't smell. You can see the grub on the walls. The idea of the steps all the way up. There's, there's just st stuff. I don't know what it is. It's caked on the walls. The idea of the drywall condition there. And this is after my girls have put in six man hours. This is the bonus room. An idea of the carpet. This looks like, I don't know. And I don't know what caused that. That's peeled back. This whole room is a dingy yellow. This must have been the smoking room. You can see the damage on the drywall paint. This, I don't know what to call it, this is where the kids apparently went to the bathroom everywhere. The whole carpet is yellowish. I'm about to gag. This is the back wall. They've taken wall plaster and plastered over it. I don't know why, it goes all the way across the room. You see we have a texture and then it's flat. Now, if anybody can see the walls here. I can't it's probably not doing justice, but the spots, I mean it just it's kids here. I think they locked the kids in here, I don't know. But uh, I don't and here they tried to patch her again, the kids colored on it again. First, can't turn on the light. There's no light bulbs. You can see the walls. Of 
minus the 4. And you can see the yellowish everywhere. This is a closet. Of course, it's just as grungy. This is the one where Linda, the cleaning lady, says she has found excrement in the light fixtures and on the walls. Let's see if I can get this. Let's see what the wall looks like. They're all like that. All the walls are foul. Every one of them. This is the other bedroom. See, carpet ruined. You see all the spots. You, know, I don't know, you can't really see the grunge on the walls. You can see some of it in the. This was a, actually a room they used color crayon in. All the walls are like that in there. Trying to get situated, we've fallen over twice. Go! We're ready! <laughs> it's noon somewhere. <laughs>
airport. Associated Beach. That's where we're gonna land.
you go down there and turn around? I've lost them now, there they are. They'll bank to the right probably and head northeast, northwest. Take pictures of you this year. That's why I brought my hat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that means it's, a, it's all the systems go then, right? I've kind of gotten used to it because our friend Steve takes so many pictures. Does he? Oh, all the time. 
Steven. Scott does too, though. Well, I feel like Scott doesn't take I mean, I know. Oh, yay! Thank you. New and rice book. Yeah. I've been waiting Is that this. the one? Yes, I'm excited to read it. Good. Good. Thanks. Merry Christmas, Milsters. Hello. Hi, Bob. It's your turn, Father. I keep going the wrong way. Another book. He did some nature. Cool. Now, I've smelled uh, theirs before. I've looked at them. Uh, Pally, do you have that little. Oh, somewhere. I don't know if you're it. it smells really fresh and clean. It's not heavy or, you know, oh, yeah. sweetie. Yeah. You know. Thanks. Need new scent. Is that like a cat? But <laughs> if you want. Um, Callie has, I think, has a little. I have a little pack. thing for. Right. Yeah, you actually went into Yeah, I know. Did they? Did you get the one woman I talked to? They didn't, couldn't figure out what I was talking about because I was called a nutcracker. <laughs> oh, that's cute. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Oh, oh the teacher. That's the, the teacher. No. Okay, it's just mom. Like mom, one for the. Like Terry, one for the camera. And <laughs> <laughs> the bell even rings. That's very funny. That's very cute. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> they put it up there. I can't yeah. believe they get that much money for those things. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm kidding. Yeah. Cute. Yeah. I, I like that old there's, thing. There's mother on the mantle for posterity. <laughs> get a good, like get a good close up. Hey, Callie. Uh -uh. What is that? Where's it coming from? That bag. Something in there. Is that someone's telephone? Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> You're so obvious. <laughs> oh, no way. Mom had mom had a chore and then <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. Yeah. A little cell phone. <laughs> well, Callie, there's a note in there for you. Six missed calls. And you've gone six well, times. I was tested to make sure it worked. There's a note in there, so. so the turn box? it over. Turn the box oh. over. The one in your left hand. There you go. Read it out loud. Rolled on cell phone privilege will be published by Mother Dearest and Ben directly. The old cell phone rules. Thank you so much. I love it. Well, we, that's a little different than, than we were going to get you one like ours, but that one that, that one's a better deal. I like it. Oh yeah, I think it will fit. I'm gonna, I, I'm going to try it on. Oh, 
Crown jewels. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Cammy, open this one. <laughs> yes. So, Terry, I hope we don't have to keep up with your mother on the carolers. No, I don't want to hold it. I'm not going to. I just want it. I, I just thought up there on the shelf it looked cute. That's all I wanted. And I like them because they remind me of olden times. Olden times. Charles Dickens. Oh, that's it's a little box, Sammy. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, do a rebox for myself? Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, I thought you didn't really have. Um, yeah, I really, really don't have that much and, tools. <laughs> well, but you do. Yeah. Yeah, tomorrow the sun rises tomorrow. Why wouldn't we, why go, to wouldn't we go to the mall? Why wouldn't we go to the mall? I mean, I don't, yeah. Don't walk, I'll buy you a pair of jeans tomorrow. Okay, Cam. Is this on a dinner? But she don't know what that yeah. is. No. Is it too dark? Buford? 
Uh, yeah, arrested. Arrested. <laughs> for armed robbery yeah. or something. Yeah. <laughs> no, and Albert Buford. <laughs> Wrap it up. Jerry, here, can you put some more butt in there? Which one's a sandwich? Where's that sandwich? She had to go get her gift. Jerry used to say, that's me in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> she was and then she say thief. Isn't that right, Chase? I remember that. Am I a thief? Okay, she's okay. Let's drop she it. She said you were a thief. Thief. A thief. Are you hot at you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Cherry chocolate. <laughs> just passes them around. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Usually there should be a couple boxes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I like one of them. Yeah. Yeah. I know you do. Pass. <laughs> yes. First gift to Christmas. Okay, let's see. This is just, that was retarded. Since this is on top of the Mama Jane. That's pretty. Mike, Debbie, Grandma. Ain't Debbie, you grabbed that yourself? Yes, I did. I do not believe it. I don't believe it. You had that gift. Oh, yeah. That's reversible paper. That's reversible paper. That's going to make you six foot twelve. Callie, that's not going to make you like your big sister, is it? You've got the box in your room. Callie, I'm not going to even And his shoe thing? Yeah. I've got the box. If you want the box, I've got it. Yeah, I'll the box. It's downstairs in the old toy room. Okay. But I, I thought I didn't. I just wasn't going to put them in your shoe boxes. And I bet you thought it's perfect. Hey, let's watch Papa open this. Okay. Good. Okay. Oh, I got me a pair of boots too. Yeah. Boots are in. Those are the lightweight Well, I think that's exactly what the uh, yeah. shoe is. They're very lightweight. Yeah, that's what you want. Yeah. yeah that's nice. I mean, you just pick them up, it's like picking up, you know. Really? Yeah. Tree boots. Rocky boots. Really good. <laughs> Much knowledge as men do, but we lack the opportunities. I voted illegally in 1872. A few days later, a U.S. Marshal arrived at my door. He had come to arrest me. I could tell he was embarrassed to escort me in a streetcar, me being a woman all. As I stepped on that train car, the driver asked me for my fare. I told him that I was going to jail and I was traveling at the expense of my government. My trial took place in a small courtroom directed by Ward Hunt. This man was known for his very anti-feminist views and would not let me speak towards my defense. I found the best lawyer I could and he defended me very well. He did everything in his power to keep me from my fine. Although Ward Hunt was determined to keep me and the rest of American women down. He later fined me for $100. And to this very day, I have not paid one dollar of my fine. <laughs> <coughs> my parents believed very firmly in education, and I devoted my whole life to giving women's rights, lifting, their, lifting them up in the eyes of society. I was born February 15, 1820. My parents sent me and my six siblings to school as soon as possible. At the local school, they taught us reading, writing, and arithmetic. As soon as I had mastered all of the arithmetic skills, I asked the teacher to teach me long division. He said that this was imposterous and that no woman should know how to do long division. I ran home and told my father that night, and he pulled me and my six siblings out of that school immediately. He started a neighborhood school where all children were taught freely and fairly. My fa though during a, a severe financial depression, my father lost the cotton mill that I had grown up on and the neighborhood school. My father was st still, like, st still admired greatly in a like, Quaker community that I had grown up on. <coughs> I, this is when I learned that women's rights were, very, were not very well respected. We had no rights at all. The man owned everything of the woman's possessions that she had owned even since she was a child. He was also allowed to beat her. This did not happen that often, but it still was allowed by law. 
The rule of thumb states that a man may feed his wife, but with an object that is not the width, not larger than the width of his thumb. <laughs> I later moved into my house, my cousin's house in New York. There I was to teach at a prestigious school. My dear cousin Margaret had four children, but after giving birth to her fourth child, she grew very ill. Her husband thought that her that her illness was not severe as his headache, and it was just a natural consequence of giving birth. My dear cousin Margaret had no did not anybody pay attention to her illness, and she sadly died four weeks later. About this time, Elizabeth Cady Stanton was organizing a women's rights convention in Seneca Falls, New York. She spoke there of women's rights. She thought that every woman should have the right to file for divorce, <coughs> vote, and most importantly, vote. Some women and men thought that this was absurd, and the newspaper called her ideas unradical and that were discussed at the so-called hand convention. <laughs> I attended my first lecture in 1851. There, William Lloyd Garrison was talking of women's rights also. This is where I actually got to meet Elizabeth Cady Stanton. We became best friends. We had many differences, though. She had three children and was married. I was unmarried and had no plans of marrying, because every time a man asked me to marry him, he had never thought that women were equal, so I could never see myself with him. Elizabeth and I quick, clicked very well. We began to write speeches of women's rights and give lectures and send out petitions. We even collected a petition with 100,000 names on it. But still, society did not even give women's rights one glance. We decided that without the, with women did not have legal rights, that nobody would ever listen to them. After many years of campaigning, I gave a speech to the New York legislature. This speech was very well impacted. They later added the, the married woman um, law. This said that every that the man that the woman's husband was not entitled to her earnings; that she was able to keep all the money that she earned. Well, the Civil War was beginning at this time, and women's rights were overshadowed by this war. And New York was later the New York legislature withdrew this law. Elizabeth Cady, I was given a lecture in 1901, in, or 1902, and, I found, and a telegraph was sent to me. I cannot believe that a telegraph would be sending to me during a lecture. It was very important, though. It was from Elizabeth Cady Stanton's daughter. It was very short and simple. It read, Mother died this morning at 3 o'clock. I could not believe that the nation was stunned, and so was I. But I had to keep on working. I knew that she would want these rights. After a few years, I had gotten old. I was 72, but I was still working, working hard. Success was very close, and at this time, failure was impossible. Susan B. Anthony, these were her last words that stung the audience, her last public words at least. She was never forgotten, and she died on March 13, 1906. She is still remembered today, and by many women, and often sometimes men, when they come across the Susan B. Anthony coin that was put into circulation in 1979.